What is going on, USC Card Lovers? Welcome back to another episode of USC Card Talk. My name is Damien, and here at USC Card Talk, we talk about everything to do with USC cards, from collecting to investing, and also recent USC card hobby news. On today's episode, there's a couple of things I want to talk about. We do have the upcoming UFC Vegas event, Derek Lewis versus Sergey Spivak. We're going to look at just the card pricing from the main event fighters for this week's Fight Night event. The card itself is a little bit lackluster. It doesn't really have that star power that's going to carry over to the card hobby just now. And there's also something that I really want to talk about coming off the back of UFC 281. Obviously, a quick reflection of UFC 281, Israel Adesanya was beaten by Alex Pereira, probably the biggest fight out of that out of that main event. Definitely feel a little bit sorry for Israel Adesanya. In my opinion, I thought that was a little bit of an early stoppage. Not going to get into anything too much. Obviously, great win for Dustin Poirier in a fantastic fight, as we all expected, against Michael Chandler. And then Zhang Weili reclaims the UFC women's strawweight belt in a terrific performance. Going to be interesting to see where the card prices goes for those fighters over the next coming months, especially with the change of championships in the women's strawweight and the men's middleweight. But what I wanted to talk about, and I've been wanting to make an episode about this for quite some time now, I want to talk about why I think UFC cards are not in the top four in the sports card hobby and why I think they are lagging behind, why I think the sport is lagging behind and therefore the cards are lagging behind behind the other big four sports obviously when we're talking sports cards in general we are talking about the big three that really run the market that is probably up first either basketball or the national football league for america the nfl and then also in third place you have baseball or you they sort of pretty interchangeable between the top three between those top three big sports in the sports card hobby And then, of course, in fourth place, this sort of tends to change around as the months go by. F1 was really big uh, probably six, four months ago. And also you've got soccer in there. Probably the most international and biggest sport in the world is soccer. When it comes to soccer, the sports card market is just not quite up there with the big three. Maybe it can in the coming future. And then, of course, you have other sports like hockey as well. So... You've got another three sports there really that um, seem to come precedent over UFC or MMA cards. And I think there's a few real reasons for that, which I want to sort of talk about today, just because I think it's interesting to compare our UFC card hobby compared to the other sports card hobby markets. Maybe we can speculate, will UFC ever crack into that top four of the sports card hobby? I'm obviously not an expert, but I feel like I can connect the dots when it comes to logically why these UFC cards aren't in the top four. Starting first with, I spoke about this before, but UFC is not a traditional structured sport. It's very week to week, and obviously it is an individual sport. It's not a team sport. But sports cards in general, there's no, there's no uh, coincidence that the top four sports in the sports card market are all team sports. And when I say the UFC is not structured, I mean that it's very week to week from the performances and then to the fight events themselves. There's just so much that happens from week to week. It's almost like these main, especially as pay-per-views, they're so big, they sort of tend to outshine the previous event, which wasn't even that long ago. It takes away from the shine of those fighters who performed and who won on those nights. The UFC as a business, it just moves from week to week very smoothly and you almost forget about some of the biggest news that happened literally only a couple of days ago. The UFC as a sport, the previous performances only stay relevant for only a couple of days. The other problem is being that it's not a typical structured sport, the fighters or the athletes, the UFC athletes, the MMA athletes, they can only compete a handful of times a year. It is not uncommon for a fighter to only fight two or three probably maximum four fights per year and this really hurts their stock because they're not so much in the public eye and they're not as relevant as what they could be compared to these team sports who are playing basketball for example they're playing multiple times per week same with hockey and same with baseball if you're not in the public eye if you're not performing on a consistently basis you're going to get left behind and i feel like that is one of the big things that happens to these ufc fighters 
they're just not able to perform enough in order to make these big performances in order to get their car pricing up there. The other driving factor that I think doesn't help the USA card market is for me, in my own opinion, there's two things that drive the sports card hobby in their relative sports. One is kids and having kids be involved in the collecting and community buying packs of cards, collecting their favorite players, collecting their favorite teams, and which I want to talk about now. UFC is not typically a child-friendly sport. Quite brutal. Even a lot of fully grown adults think that it's too violent, that it's too brutal, and they don't want to watch it. UFC, MMA, is not a sport that everyone wants to watch or can get behind, unfortunately. And if you do not have these kids who are part of the collecting community, a part of the retail buying community, it's going to affect the overall product in terms of sales and in terms of popularity. You're not having the driving force of a kid market behind UFC MMA cards. And the other thing that I was talking about with the driving market, and one of almost the biggest things, is that the sport is relatively new. MMA as a whole, obviously the first UFC event was back in 1993. Since then, the sport has grown exponentially. There's many other promotions, but none bigger than the UFC. So the sport as a whole, it has not been around that long. So it's going to take a long time for people to become accustomed to even having MMA and fighting on primetime TV. The, the ESPN deal for UFC was absolutely massive and obviously moving forward I hope that ESPN and UFC can still remain in partnership because that is going to help the sport more than anything. But the UFC, MMA in a sport, it's 100 years, 50 years, however long behind all these other sports, baseball, football, soccer, basketball, these sports have been around and MMA in a whole has a long way to go before it catches up to the marketing and to the overall and to the normal level of these other sports. And building on that, because the sport is new and UFC cards were first introduced by Tops back in 2009, which is really not that long ago compared to your other sports cards that have been around since the 1930s, since the 1940s. There's just no real solid foundation of so-called grail cards when it comes to the legends of MMA. UFC does have, of course, a Hall of Fame, but basically back when a lot of these Hall of Fame fighters actually fought, the, the UFC as a sport back then, it was so much smaller than what it is now. It has exponentially grown since 2014, since the introduction of Conor McGregor and the way that he actually monetized the sport, the way that he brought light onto the sport has obviously never been seen before. And really, a lot of the Hall of Famers who fought before then, as great as they were, as great as their careers were, they just didn't have the eyes on them for for there to be as much appreciation as what there should be. So therefore, the UFC Hall of Fame, it is not drawing. I mean, if you want to look up, even Hoist Gracie, he was the first ever person to win a UFC event. You can get some of his cards for pennies compared to what you're going to be paying for the modern stars. It's just because people don't know the histories yet behind MMA. I believe they will be in the future. The more that MMA, the more that UFC can grow as a sport, I think that people are going to eventually appreciate all these true legends. Your fighters like Ken Shamrock, Randy Couture, Dan Severin, even Don Fryer, these guys will probably be more appreciated more in the future when more people learn um, about the history of the sport. But it's just all so new right now. And because we don't have these Hall of Famers like your Michael Jordans, like your Tom Brady's, that really hurts the market because people and investors and people who are putting all this money into these big cards, it's just not happening in the UFC card market. The UFC, if you were to try and pick an athlete, who is the greatest of all time in MMA? It's just so hard. Obviously, it's so much of a different sport compared to these other team sports, but there's just not that drive for the Michael Jordans, which boost up the basketball market. These other sports have these massive superstars not only now but from the past that really helped build their market and the UFC really lacked that. That will come 
in time in the future. As I said, the more people that start to watch MMA, the more people that start to get into MMA, these legends will probably be more appreciated then. But at the moment, the sport is just far too new to have these Hall of Fame legends that are really going to bring eyes to the sports card market. And building off that last point with the UFC and having a lackluster Hall of Fame and appreciation for the legends of their own sport, is the UFC do an absolutely fantastic job of shitting on their legends. They do a great job of ruining the careers of their legendary fighters just upon retirement or just before retirement. In other sports, when a player or a Hall of Fame great or a legend of the sport is basically upon retirement, their careers are very much celebrated. They are generally normally eased into retirement. But not here in MMA, not here at the UFC. Oh, you've had a fantastic career. Let's take Frankie Edgar, for example, because he's just very much relevant and a perfect example of how the UFC treat their legends. If you look at Frankie Edgar's career over the last 10, 15 years, he has fought the who's who of the bantamweight, of the lightweight, and also the featherweight divisions. That guy has fought nothing but absolute top 10 fighters for most of his career, not to mention winning lightweight title fights against guys who were probably 15, 20 pounds heavier than him. But guess what? You want to have your retirement fighter MSG, the mecca of all combat sports for your retirement. No problem. We're going to give you a young stud who's clearly in his athletic prime, clearly in his athletic prime, just so we're going to put you on show. We're going to send you out on your back just so we can build up another young guy and his career off your legacy. It's absolutely, um, uh, it's, and the, this is not the first, for you who have watched MMA, have been a follower of the UFC for any time other than this weekend, this is just one example of literally tens, uh, li- uh, you any of the greats from the UFC, you name them, they have had been put in a similar position. They tried to do this to Nate Diaz only two months ago. Thankfully, uh, his went a little bit, his went better. He's not having to fight, comes up. But the UFC are notorious for doing this, and it really hurts their own legends. And I don't, I understand why they do it from a business perspective, but come on. A guy like Frank Edgar. Such an elite fighter, such a great person, and you want to do that to him in his retirement fight. It's just, it's, uh, yeah, I don't get it. And it really does hurt, as I said, UFC sports card market because their legendary Hall of Famers are getting shit on at the end of their career. And guess what people are going to remember? You're only remembered by your last few performances. These are just my points of view. I think it's interesting to compare UFC cards and the UFC card market to these other big name sports and break it down as to why there is such big differences between the markets. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Be very interested to hear your guys' thoughts. Some of you guys have been involved in the hobby longer than me. Some of you guys are naturally older than me. So I would love to hear your guys' opinion. Let me know in the comments below. Now, let's get to the upcoming USC Vegas event, taking a look at Derek Lewis versus Sergey Spivak. We can start with Sergey Spivak. He's a rookie from 2002 products, so let's see what we can find in recent sales. We have a 2022, it's the Octagon side, select gold. Best offer accepted, less than $70 on November the 8th. We got his Octagon side, Red Disco, for his amount of 99 Best offer accepted, less than $20. We have a PSA 9 of his 2022 Select. It's the tricolor out of 25, 7 bits, $51. We have his Hyper Silver Prism, 1 bit, 99 cents. We have his Silver Prism, $2.99. Not a whole lot of cards on the market for Sergey. We can check out his opponent now. For those of you who've been watching the sport, Daryl Lewis is one of the true characters. He has such a great personality. Although he has crazy knockout power, I believe he has the most knockouts in UFC history. But not only that, he just has a fantastic personality and he's fantastic in his... He has this natural way of basically being a comedian on the mic. It has helped build him into be one of the most fan favorite heavyweight fighters that probably 
we have seen in the UFC to date. So I actually haven't really checked out Derek Lewis's card prices before, but it's going to be interesting to see where he sits at compared to some of the other big names in the UFC heavyweight division. We can start with his Chronicles Noir out of 10, $27, 18 bids, November 13th. Have a 2021 first year of UFC Panini Prism. It's the Sensational Signatures, $30. We have his box set scope out of 99, $20, 50. Another sensational signature is this one being PSA 9. It's the gold. It was 17 bids on November 7th for $98. We have the tie-dye action octagon signatures from 2021 Select. It's a PSA 9. Best offer accepted, less than $90. We've got the gold knockout from 2021. 11 bids, $35.80. We have a 2019 Tops Museum. It's the rookie it's the auto relic out of $199, $50 buy it now. We have the immaculate. It's the marks of greatness auto, less than $100. Definitely a little bit surprised. I would have thought we would have seen a little bit more action given you can get a 2021. It's the first year prism product. It's the sensational gold signatures for Derek Lewis. It was a PSA 9 and it sold for less than $100. As I've talked about before, the market at the moment is kind of crazy, um, definitely hard to pick. So as I said, that's why I'm not doing these picks on prediction of pricing after the fights now, just basically because I'm not comfortable doing them. Who knows what's going to happen with the market? Everyone will just have to check for themselves, decide whether you want to buy a card for yourself or not. And this leads me into, I did release a video earlier on the week. I talked about the UFC Card Talk $15 challenge that has started already. All you have to do to enter is basically find a card before the end of the month that you paid for. It could be a slab, it can, it, it can be a raw card, any MMA related card, and you have to have purchased it this month for $15 or less. Tag me on your Instagram story at UFC Card Talk. Follow me on my Instagram, and that's all you have to do to enter. And then if I contact you at the end of the month with proof of purchase price, then once you've sent that to me, I can put that card into a poll on and let the UFC card community decide which is the UFC card talk $15 challenge winner for that month. If you are the winner, I will get in contact with you and I will pay for that card for you. As I said, let's get this challenge started. This will be the first month and it will be running and it'll be an ongoing competition now. And I appreciate every single one of you guys who are watching. And if you're still watching this, let me know down in the comments below. I'd like to know about who is actually still watching right now. There is going to be more competitions coming in the future for my videos, but I obviously want to get a bit more of a following. I want people to actually want to watch my videos and what I have to say, more so than just tuning in in order to win something. But I think this UFC Card Talk $15 monthly challenge is a great place to start. I'm super excited about it. I hope you are, guys, are excited about it too. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next week.